HeppaLoofingLLC.com. Just look at that. Would you look at that? I'll get it. Are you filming? Link. Today we're in Lincoln. Today we're in Lil. Ah! Today we're at Lincoln, Nebraska, visiting Apple Roofing, one of the newest companies on Roofing Insights Directory. We will show you how they do what they do. They do over twenty million dollars a year worth of business, worth of roofing jobs, and we will show you how these guys are absolutely killing it. Why Roofing Insights recommends them, and why they're so different. Let's go. Apple roofing, free roof for life. Dustin. Hey there. I saw you get out of the car and I ran down and I was like, where did they go? Me of sure. course you had to go to the shop first. Well, hey. well yeah. that's where we start. How's it going? Well, Marcus met us at the back too, so you know. Oh, you met Marcus. Well, we came from that road, so that's why I'm here. Mean, okay. No, that's very, great. very unique office. Yeah, cool. Appreciate it, man. So let's start here. So this is just main meeting? Yep, uh, yep, kind of just a, what we call the conference room, I guess, in here. And now, how big is this table? Like, what's the 20 feet or so? It's probably it's, the biggest table I've seen. It's right in there. I think, if I remember right, it's like four and a half feet, maybe by 21, if, I, if my memory serves right. I, I could Sounds be off, but right. I, I do things in it's drywall. very impressive. So. Yeah, I appreciate that. How much did it cost you? You know, we got a really good deal on it. I can't remember the exact figure, but I want to say right around like maybe 6,000 for the table. And then I know we had to pay like a little bit of extra to get, you know, the speakers and the technology into it. But uh, Six grand. For, for, for something that size, that's pretty reasonable from what I've seen elsewhere, I guess. So sure. But yeah, the guy that did it's a real artist. So it's a nice table. Thank you. Absolutely love it. Heavy duty, that's for sure. How many homeowners do you have coming in like per month? Do you have any traffic? Because you're in the main area here. Um, right now it's definitely well, down, you know, with COVID going on, but... Um, is it common for the customers to walk in? Um, no, oh. um, we probably get, you know, less than a hundred people come in a year probably, like that are clients. Are there common to the showroom or they come in to pay a bill or usually what's... they're coming in to pay a bill or meet with a sales rep what crm do you use uh aculinks aculinks yep <clears throat> what, what is this just big massive printer yeah for... this is for blueprints so one of the things that we do in our business is we try to like really separate each department down so we have guys that just call on new construction only so they uh, are always printing out prints you know and it was just way more convenient to to have our own printer here yeah so saves saves running across town to grab a print or whatever you know for them so makes sense how much of the new construction do you do um we probably rough about maybe 300 new construction homes a year like residential or commercial M residential mostly um so you work do, for builders yep yep we do a lot of custom home builders is kind of where we found our niche on that and then uh we do do some new construction that's like commercial too, but that's just, you know, a little bit more here and there. Nate isn't here because of COVID, but like he's in that office. He does like our supplementing and stuff. This is John. He does uh, what we call MRP, so manage repair programs. So like- uh, Which one do you use? Uh, mostly contractor connection and- It's all state, right? Um, well, we're actually piloting one right now for State Farm through there and then we do a lot of nationwide. Um, we do farmers. I think we do some, maybe some Allstate. I'd have to ask John. He he knows all the carriers that that we use. What all what all uh, programs are we on other than Contractor Connection? And then what are the carriers that we are doing work for? Uh, yeah, the big ones would be. Uh, Who? The big ones would probably be uh, Contractor Connection, 
Uh, so which company is that? Which insurance carrier? Insurance carriers. Um, big one we do through them is Nationwide Insurance. Uh, they have a few other smaller ones that aren't quite as common. How are their prices compared to Xactimate? Like they use Xactimate pricing. Can you, are you able to supplement it or you just do for original Xactimate? Um, we actually build the estimates. So it kind of comes out. I mean, obviously it's a working relationship, but um, it works out both well for both parties. So right yeah i mean we don't really i think they have guidelines right that we yeah, built they, they like, kind of they have like a, a set of rules of how their estimates get built so we're really just documenting the damage and building it according to how the estimate should be built and, and get from there is right. a big part of the business um those programs yeah we have uh in the last what two years we've grown this division quite a bit i think uh what what did we do last year about three million we did uh, about four million the last four million years. Okay. And it's between what programs? Contractor Connection, you said? Contractor Connection, Sedgwick, CCMR, those are probably the three bigger ones. Uh, prop, um, CCA Global as well. How about Matsky? We don't do Matsky. No, so. can't make that one work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody can. So. <laughs> well, it's, it's a good intel. I love it. Yeah, I mean... We'd love to do it. It just, yeah, it's. I don't think it's What's really the designed too cheap. Well, you're pretty much like a subcontractor for them. Yeah, I mean, I I think that Matt, in my perception, I guess you know, Mad Sky's not um, a company that is meant for you know a roofing company. It's more designed for like mm -hmm. uh, for the sub, an, a, a sub, yeah, or uh, uh, maybe they pretty much compete operator. with you they act as a GC themselves correct yeah I would see it that way yep makes so. sense but right is this like a challenge me for my position type of thing <laughs> 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 tell us about it uh, well we had we had a uh, chess tournament last winter 16 players in a bracket so who, who won <laughs> I did. Did it? Good figure. Are you good at it? Barely. Barely. <laughs> who, who did you beat in the final? Um, our brother Michael. <laughs> yeah, John's my brother. Oh, he. Michael. I yeah. see. So your brothers. Yeah. How is it to work for your brother? Oh, it's kind of interesting sometimes. But <laughs> at least you can beat him in the chest. But yeah, he doesn't get too upset. <laughs> I visit a lot of very successful roofing businesses and I always ask them this one question if they can pinpoint one thing that really helped their business to grow tremendously most of the time the answer is is when they switch to CRM to help build their process it was a definitely game changer for me in my business but not all CRMs are the same do your own research last week I was sitting with the Afco roofing out of Texas 25 million dollar company absolutely amazing and Heath Hicks, the owner of the company, gave our audience advice to do your research before you invest in a CRM. It caused them a lot of headaches to switch from one company to another because they did not do research in the first place. As a matter of fact, I did the same mistake and I was using the same company that Heath Hicks switched to Job Nimbus. I have reviewed many CRM companies and I'm confident that Job Nimbus is all the way at the top. One of the reasons I recommend Job Nimbus because they work really well for big companies and small companies and they're very, very affordable. Check out my friend at Job Nimbus and see for yourself why so many roofing companies start growing when they switch to Job Nimbus. I recommend them, I like them, tell them Dmitry sent you. This is our kind of our break room right here. Um, is it the uh, Apple? Uh Oh yeah, L like, Robo? Yeah, we call it. Uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to think of what they name that damn thing. Wally. 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 Yeah, that's Wally. <laughs> so yeah, they put eyes on. I'm surprised to see so many HP products in the office. What's up with that? Man, we're old school. <laughs> <laughs> what's the name? Be uh, what's behind the name? Company name? Apple Roofing. Yeah. Okay. So, so the the story behind that is is. Uh, when we when we went to name our our company, Marcus said the only thing I care about is the color's got to be green, 
And, and from my side, all I wanted was something that you could put a symbol to so it's very memorable, right? Because my old company name, people would come up and be like, oh yeah, you roofed my house, you know? I uh, can't remember the name, but you roofed my house, you know? I'd be like the roofer guy. Yeah. And uh, I always thought, man, it's not gonna be good if they can't remember what my company name is, right? So that was one of the things when, when we renamed that I wanted it to be something easy to remember. So really we were literally just sitting in front of a computer spitting out every Probably single Apple name. Computer. No, it wasn't. I did look to the, to the side though and I saw my phone and I just wrote down Apple. <laughs> and when, when we came, you know. Because it was to, iPhone? Yep. And, and so when we came down to, uh, I mean, we probably had 200 names written out, written out you know. And uh, when it came down to it, I was like, well, this could go with green. And it, it's a memorable name, I think. So easy to market. And it has an object that could go with it. And uh, very cool. So that's how we kind of settled on Apple roofing. It was kind and we got the green collar in it too. To that's right. Marcus. Yeah, green apple. Green apple. So well, yeah. You mentioned earlier that you are getting 99% of your sales is ICO. Yeah, I, I wouldn't probably say 99%. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, like really high up there, right? Is it Nordic or Dynasty? Uh, we do both. So we do the Nordic and the Dynasty. Which one do you sell more? It's about, it's probably getting close to 50-50, but huh. we're still a little heavier on the Dynasty. So then this is like a, a metal forming machine. We do some um, metal forming. This is actually called the Quadro Cinco. So the cool thing about this this machine is if you look at look at everything, it's, it's uh, notched from factory. So all of our ends are cut and ready to bend over and this is ready to bend over perfectly on on the end and that so you don't have to try and you know this has always been a sore spot for people that open rib there and how to make it look good so now it looks you know perfect so that was kind of the reason we went with this machine is because we were able to get everything factory notched you know is you can fly a drone over and import it in and it'll lay out every panel and it cuts the angles on this table and everything. So it's it's pretty cool. Pretty cool machine. Love it. How much is it? Uh, I think this was about 140,000. And then we have our um, shear and uh, brake here that you know we do mostly just custom flashings on. Um, we don't really try to bend anything that you know, drip edge or anything like that, unless it's something custom. But this is where we do all of all of that. Very cool. So, how much are those machines? Uh, those are huge. See. I think, I think together, they were right around maybe a hundred and ten thousand, something like that. Oh. Well, so. So you make all your custom flashings for all your jobs? Uh, no. This is just kind of well. This some is of this stock. is. So only like uh, will we make custom flashings if it's, if it's a unique roofing detail. So we're not gonna like make our own drip edges or sure. step flashings or anything like that unless it's, um, you know, I'm gonna use an example of uh, a Da Vinci roof, right? You know how when you cut them, it leaves yep. that open edge? So we custom flash ours to have a, a uh, basically like a gravel stop that comes mm -hmm. up so it just looks really nice and clean, well, now you know? So we do things like that, that just kind of... Do you do a lot of Da Vinci's? Um, I wouldn't say a lot, but... but do you do a few? A, a few here and there. How Basketball, big is the warehouse? 7,500 square foot last year to this line. And then we added another 12,000 on and that one. And then, no, so it's 24,000 square feet total. 24,000, wow. Yep, of warehouse, so. You said it's $6 million facility total? Yeah, somewhere in there. Um, is is what we're what we're into it for. I like the little rap car. Oh yeah, who, that, who that, is that? That was my my son's uh, third birthday present. Oh. I got him a little Apple roofing truck. <laughs> what but, is it doing here? We had a uh, little event here for like kids and what have you, so we brought it in for the kids to drive around. So it's still still here. Still Marcus here. is going to actually take that home to his boy. So nice. Mine's outgrown it. James Hardy. Do you install a lot of James Hardy? 
Uh, not a lot. We're actually going to be discontinuing that. So that's the last of our stock that, I, I don't know what we have here, maybe a semi left or something of it, but maybe a couple semis of it left, but um, that's gonna be the last of it. After that's gone, we're not stocking that anymore. So just buy as you go. Yep, yep. So a lot of the uh, si the siding stuff like that is just for new construction. What you keep in here are those nails. So yeah, so these are all in this this aisle. These are all uh, nails. These are plastic. So you have caps. your custom nails with your name on it. Yeah, yep. How much you pay for those? Like you know, it, it varies. Um, and why do you stock the nails in the first place? Well, so our nail is called the Barnacle 300. Okay. So it's a ring shank nail. Okay. And uh, so one of the cool things about it is, you know, we're using like a, uh, whether it's the OC or the Dynasty, you know, it's got the uh, nail strip technology, right? So this is, is gives you three times the holding power. So we, we just felt like that was a really good uh, thing to offer people that gives them a little bit even more pull strength. So I noticed in one of your pull tests online, you guys yeah. actually pulled the nail out. Mm -hmm. This one Not with on. these. So and they'll have to stay? Yeah, they're gonna have to stay. But why are you stocking them? Why can't, and where do you buy them from? Directly from China? Like y yeah, we- uh, By semi truck of nails? That's well, a lot of nails. We do it in shipping containers. I see. Um, so yeah, they, they do come direct, uh, but we're very big on brand. Sure. So I can tell. you know everything that we do has, if we can get it to be green, we're a very color branded company. So we want um, you know our brand on anything that that we're providing. So that's one of those things. So that's it's not a saving thing. It's a it, correct. Branding. Yeah, I mean I don't. I I pay more for these nails probably than you know if I was to go get like smooth shank nails, sure. I could go get them for you know about three dollars less a box. Um, so but it's, it's not necessarily to... about that. It's about the branding. Of course, when you buy large quantities, you do get a, a, a break it's on the of... pricing, but that's because of the quantity. Discount. And you have catch all system. How do you like that? Yeah. I just so... noticed you have. Oh yes. Oh, okay. So... so tell you what, we actually uh, bought two of those. Um, those just came in last week actually. So Very yeah, cool. I think that's a, a really good invention. <laughs> so. And then, so that there is our synthetic felt. Um, I think that's, you know, a great way to uh, brand ourselves. You know, when there's a, matter of fact, if you look on Google Earth, the last, I think Google Earth was in 2016. If you zoom down on Lincoln, you're gonna see a lot of green roofs. Really? Yeah, yeah, if you zoom down, you're gonna see a lot of green roofs in 2016. That's awesome. Because we had a storm that year, so we had quite a few going. So what kind of synthetic do you use? Uh, it is actually a Bigfoot product. Bigfoot. Yep. So we private label it. So and yeah. then, uh, have, you, have you seen the peak pallets before? No. Okay. So this is, this is, uh, something you're going to love. Um, so these are designed to sit on your, your ridge. Okay. And you got to break your pallets in half, but then you get you can crane your shingles right onto the ridge and the cool thing about that is is you know how guys throw bundles over the ridge and, and you know break them over the ridge now they're always laying flat especially like in cold weather this is going to be a big deal right because they're but what's the peach so th this one here is a four to six twelve these are four to six twelve these are these are where you go up to uh, six to eight twelve I see. Here. And then they're still working on a design for 1212, but they haven't so got they it yet. So they just deliver it on top of the roof? Yep. Yep. They just set the pallet right down on top of that. So you don't have to unload it. Correct. Saves a ton of man hours. It's a huge efficiency thing. Wow. So if you notice outside, we have- Where do you buy them from? Peaked um, pallets. Peaked pallets. Yeah. Yep. Check it out. I mean, they're, uh, it's, it's honestly something that I kick myself for not thinking of, right? Like the simplest thing. And I'm like, why didn't I think of that? You, you know, well, I think one of the world's like biggest struggles is finding manpower, right? Especially to do like really labor intensive jobs and unpacking shingles all day. 
is a really labor intensive job. So, so you probably know how it is then when crews walk up on a job and they're like, oh my God, we got to put those on the roof. I think I'll leave, right? <laughs> so this has really helped solve that. And, you know, as you saw, we probably, we have two uh, delivery semis, right? Mm -hmm. So one of them will go and drop on the ground and the other one, when we're really busy, you know, he's putting them on the roof, but then he'll follow back behind that other one and put them on the roof quick. So saves our crews a ton of work. It's a lot safer. You know, most of the accidents happen getting from the ladder to the roof. So oh, yeah. we, we feel like it's just, it's it one way to keep sense. your help happy. The crews like, love it. How many roofs you do per year? Uh, Look usually at this right, around, right around 2,500 roofs a year. 2500. Um, so yeah, this is uh, most of the yard and then we have every color separated. So we've got black over here. Um, and then all of these, every row is a color. There How much do color. you think you save by buying bulk? You know, that's a good question. Um, and, and I'm trying to figure that out myself, but. Because you have overhead, to, but it's still, does it enough to cover you, all your overhead? Um, so we've recently actually separated the company, the distribution side of the company out so we can track that better. Um, had I not been like doing all the branding stuff that I do, I don't know that I would have ever done this because, um, you know, there's a lot more overhead in it than the guy thinks, you know, mm -hmm. um, well, we have trucks, I, you have storage, you have. Right. So I, I don't know that we necessarily save a ton of money in um, buying in bulk. I, I think that if, if the volume will continue, you know, then of course I think it, it will be good in the long run. But, you know, it's convenience just, for you. It, it is. I mean, I can tell you on years like let, let's say you can't get this all started because I couldn't get something on the roof. Right. Like. During 2016, you can't wait, yeah. doing 2016, you know, they were ground dropping everything. And it was such a problem with the labor, you know, they were like, nah, I'd rather just quit today than put this on the roof, you know? So originally it started by me buying a ladder Vader truck just to get material up on the roof. And then, you know, once you had that, you were, it just one thing leads to another. And here we are now with this and cranes and everything else to, to do it. So now we're, you know, invested enough that it doesn't take much more to continue to do it. But, you know, when you consider, you know, the cost of a building and the land and, you know, everything that it takes and the equipment to deliver, you know, that's a time payoff, I guess. Sure. So Not immediate. I, I, I don't know exactly how fast the payoff will be. That's volume dependent, you know. So, but it looks good. You you definitely building a brand. You definitely make an impression that you're here to stay. You almost look like distribution. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that you're controlling all aspects of the job. I think it's definitely a convenience well, factor you, for your crews and employees. And if you notice too, everything in this yard is single stacked. Mm -hmm. When you go by the distributors, you're going to see Probably. double stack and triple stacks. I got a bug. Yeah. All right. And you know, they're, they're for just, materials is much better. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And so, you know, we, it's we try to do it's everything. Funny, it's funny you said it because I want to interrupt you. Every time I've seen manufacturer um, have a claim, they're trying to dismiss it because of the double stack and supply. They're always trying to blame the supplier. Mm -hmm. I have claims where like we have shingles on the ground yep. and they say it's not because of cold install, install was fine, but they say it's how, uh, if they have problems with the shingle, they blame manufacturer, uh, they blame supplier, how it was like, and they deny the warranties. I've seen it several times. Right. If somebody triple stacks No them, control, yeah. Right, yeah, you know, I mean, they're trying to fit as much as they can in a small space, and I get that. I mean, space isn't cheap, but that is what their job is, is, you know, to honor the warranty, and as soon as you double stack something, there goes your warranty, you know, really. True. So. True.
So obviously you have your gutter machines. This is a gutter coil. Yeah, um, I can't really tell you anything about that. Uh, it's not yours, or you don't control. I, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. I just don't know. I just have eight thousand dollar gutter machine, and I don't know nothing I, about. Well, it. I didn't. I don't. I don't actually know anything about it. It looks like it is pretty new. Sure. So somebody decided we needed one, and they got it. <laughs> so most I of our. I thought you're the owner. Well, yeah, I am, but I. <laughs> People get to make decisions here, you know, I trust sure. them. So oh, I get it, I get it. So guide me through the process, how your process of install goes, how do materials get from here to the job site? So you deliver shingles, you deliver, so pretty much somebody comes in and builds the job. Okay, so um, we treat like the di the distribution side completely like a distribution side. So, so you know, the roofing company pays distribution. Correct. What's the name of distribution center? Ram Distribution. Ram, what's the, what's the, What's that way it's not around? Uh, we didn't really care what it was called, and uh, I, I said to one of the office You're probably called, driving I, Dodge I, Ram that day. And yeah, she, she did kind of the same thing I did with the phone. She looked outside and saw the Dodge Ram, and she said Ram, and I said, cool, go with it. You know? I mean, I really didn't care because it's not something we're marketing, sure, sure. you know? So that's so just... Ram, and you pay them for employees for delivery for materials to them? Correct. Yep. Ram pays their own employees. Ram sends Apple roofing an invoice, um, you know, just like a distributor would. Who owns Ram? Uh, same owners as Apple? Same owners, yep. But we just wanted to make sure we're treating it like a business, right? For tax reasons, mainly? No, I mean, it probably wouldn't. Matter of fact, it would be better for us if we didn't run it through a distribution company, but uh, for tax reasons, but it, it's pretty insignificant. Um, but the, the side of knowing, uh, what your costs are, you know, is really important mm -hmm. to us. Like know your if, numbers. Yeah. Knowing your numbers. Like we felt like it was just better to separate, you know, at one time we were running it through the roofing company, you know, and then at some certain point it kept growing and we're like, no, we want to know what our numbers are, you know, what's the employees, what's the trucks, what's the rent, you know, it rents from us too, right? So hmm. every, we try to treat everything. We have the same thing. In our if you company. have one very large business, it can cover up a lot of things that aren't making you money. Sure. You know, so we try to like, if it's significant, let's break it down. So we know if, if it's making you money or not, you know, there's Josh. He mans, hey, the, he's mans the ship out here. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got that mullet. <laughs> All American. <laughs> See, we're always looking for one more thing we can have. And I recently come across these bad boys, you know, anything that we can do to continue to brand on Gr the job green side. Hats. Or, yep, yep. Nice. So everything we can do, we'll do it. Love it. So this is this is Kenny. How you doing, Kenny? He 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 manages like uh, all the new construction and property management division. Finally, I see Apple computers. Yeah, that's where Apple computers are. <laughs> this is Mike, my other brother. So hey, he's uh, in production, and then this is Chris. He's also in production. Very and cool. then uh, this is Jesse Otto. What's happening, Jesse? Howdy. What's up, man? He's, he manages over all of production. How many projects can a production manager manage at a time without being overwhelmed? Do you have a magic number? Do you have like pipeline number? How many you can juggle at a time? Over probably over two, three hundred. At a time, open? Yeah. He, he, uh, well, we're kind of unique in the fact that we try not to do any siding. So we do roofs and gutters. I see. So it's a little... I've seen some Higher. James Hardy pallets of it. Yeah, I know, but you know, we're not doing much James Hardy anymore. Yeah, you have like two truck loads. <laughs> That'll that, be gone though. Those lot. are those are bought. I, I, they I just I, need I, you I, out the door. I know some siding companies <laughs> who don't have a couple truck loads and you tell me you don't do siding and he has a couple truck loads <laughs> in a warehouse. You know, it will be gone. <laughs> it will be gone. So if I call you say I I have a siding job for you, will you take it? No. I'm gonna say I want to have you call Nebraska on siding. <laughs> so you'll give me a referral. Uh huh. Siding has been a thing that kind of like 
has been what it's it, at first when we started it was like a thing right we did roof siding and gutters right and then in what 15 probably we were like okay no more no more siding no more and then like after that we like grew and people's like our our reviews went way up you know our, everything and then what was it last winter we were like okay we're only going to do it on new construction right so we got into it on new construction and then we we're like uh, it's still not worth it so wow i know how hard it is for business owner to cancel a service i always i'm a, yeah. always vote for less services mm -hmm. and do more of whatever you can but guys always like i have my students in my network they would call me and say I want to do fencing, like roofing and fencing, like why fencing or painting or like drywall. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like the less you do, the more of it you can do. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, just in the raining day, just in case. What if I don't have roofing? Well, you're not going to have roofing jobs if you're doing fences. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, that's a good great point. point. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, well I mean, great point. when we first made the decision to quit doing it, it was like, it's pretty scary. Cause yeah. it was, you know, it was a significant amount of revenue a year, you know, but we just, we were convinced that we'd be better off not doing it because of the high reviews you yeah, know, think, and yeah. like just staying in a lane and just getting really good at one thing is just better. Especially with the siding, you free so much time. You put that into roofing. Now you have more time for estimates, more time to build it and just more efficient overall. Right. If you produce everything today and you still have human capital, just go sell more jobs, produce more jobs, roofing jobs. Mm -hmm. But if everybody is overwhelmed with a freaking few well, hardy builds. Look at, look at like most, most siding that comes in a, in a roofer's world, you know, especially in this part of the world, is maybe from a hailstorm, right? So what are you getting? You're getting usually a side or two of the house and the product may or may not be made and even if it is made, does it match? You know, and- Is it the mention state? It is, it is. Well, so, God, that's a loose term. Though. It is a loose <laughs> term, you're right. I mean, doesn't mean that you're not gonna be wrapped up in, you know, debating whether it's a, a legitimate match or not, you know? I mean, first of all, what's it take you just to identify what product it is? get a piece in and then see how well it IHL matches and all of that right stuff. like it by the time you've already done that couldn't have you been more productive doing something else you know they, oh, they, if 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 it were up to me i think that there's you know a cost involved with finding the product and identifying the match and dealing with is it reasonable or not that's like most of the claim if we just knew what the product was and just had to go install it, that'd probably be like no big deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they don't pay for that, you know, on an insurance claim, they don't pay you for your time to go research well, what know. product is. And so you can manage a couple hundred jobs at a time and not being overwhelmed. In 2016, he was doing 40 roofs a day. 40 roofs a day. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. Do you call every homeowner about delivery, upcoming scheduling? Email or call. Yeah. He he pretty well like has it processed out to where it's a little bit more automated, you know. Sure. I mean, we try to minimize the phone calls for forty the most roofs part. a day. No. Two three days is like most companies do in a year. This will probably be our record year for for leads right now because it's. Uh, I think we're over a thousand this this month now. Oh, wow. So you can always tell where the storms happen, you know. It's actually really interesting data because when you go look at, like, when you see, like, several years here where you always see, like, a little bump, those are years that, like, we did a home show or something like that. You know what I mean? So nice. you, you kind of start to see, like, okay, this year we didn't do a home show right there. So we just flatlined through that, you know. It kind of tells you, like, the activity that you do is either worth it or not and it it's just funny to see where the storms hit every year you know you can see last year we we had a little storm right here which was 
the closest we'd ever gotten to this was 2016 so 2020 is going to exceed those but this is a uh, training room and brian is training two people right now two people so n new sales guys no social distancing here <laughs> irresponsible so one of the things we do in here is we actually like teach all the guys like all the components of a roof make sure they're familiar with all the terminology of course how to do sales and you know go, go through aculinx estimate and then we actually will have them go you know install a roof and tear a roof off you know so that they so they spend that day on the job too yeah yep or in, in certain scenarios like we have a little roof down in the shop that we've built it was up on a rack i think when we were out there but just to explain like flashings around chimneys valleys how they're built you know things like that that we feel like are you know important for them to know what they're selling i guess of course so please comment below what company you would like us to visit next if you want to nominate your company comment below your name your company name and why we would come to you, what makes you so special, why you think you deserve to be on our directory and be featured on our channel. Comment below and I'll see you guys in the next video.